don't let its meager exterior fool you. This building is home to the most expensive commercial real estate in the entire United States. The building is known as One Wilshire Boulevard, as you can see by the name printed on the top. Architecturally, it's a pretty nondescript 1960s office building designed by the firm SOM. While that firm does have some pretty amazing buildings to their credit, I think that most people would agree this isn't one of them. But in 2013, this building sold for $437 million. That's $660 per square foot of leasable space. That's by far the highest price paid of any office building in downtown LA. That's a lot of money. Today, it's about $855 per square foot or $9,000 per square meter. But why would this, of all buildings, be so desirable? You'd probably guess that it must be due to its fantastic location. While you'd be right, it's probably not for the reason that you think. It does have spectacular views, but no better than its neighbors. Most of these neighbors are also newer and feature more traditional amenities. What its location offers, and what this building takes unparalleled advantage of, is incredible access to the internet. While the internet moves at the speed of light, for processes where even fractions of a millisecond count, physical location on the globe still matters. And for that, one Wilshire is positioned perfectly. The building is what is known as a carrier hotel, an urban structure that hosts the servers and equipment that power the internet. Carrier hotels are critical infrastructure for modern communication and commerce. They're also known as co-location facilities because they house networking and telecommunications equipment for multiple companies. These facilities provide a secure, reliable, and efficient environment for businesses to house their IT infrastructure and connect with other networks. So this building houses the world's largest telecom companies and the connections to each other's networks. Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, international carriers including China Telecom, China Unicom, all have offices and IT equipment in this building. Also, other businesses that rely on critical connections to the web like Amazon, Google, and Netflix all call this building home. In total, it has 250 network service providers. So the building is important because it houses nodes on all of these networks. But what is it about this location that makes it so significant for this work? Well, carrier hotels are often located in dense urban environments where multiple corporations are located and need connections. And downtown LA certainly fits the bill. One Wilshire is ideally suited to serve the region's entertainment, media, gaming, and high-tech firms, along with traditional areas such as healthcare, finance, and higher education. But this building is also located just inland of where much of the Asia's internet traffic arrives through undersea cables to serve the North American continent. So connecting directly to this important exchange allows One Wilshire to maintain as seamless a connection as possible to both Asia and the rest of the United States. Further, the building's height means that it has unbroken lines of sight to other buildings in the area for microwave and other antennae to connect to cross airwaves. It's like a beacon or a lighthouse with invisible information streaming in and out of it. It is likely the most connected building in the world. It has thousands and thousands of little orange cables running into the building and stopping on one of its 30 floors. The orange color also graces the sidewalk outside. That's because LA color codes its various infrastructure networks underground. Red for power, blue for water, orange for networking, and so on. And the fact that this quality of the building above all else is what it can offer shows a lot about what we value, the role of the city in contemporary life, and how the built environment serves to support and enable our lives. This marks a significant difference between the way that we traditionally think of the city and the way that it actually works today. In the past, visible geographic features were often the organizers of cities. Access to a river, for instance, meant routes for transportation, power for manufacturing, maybe even sources for food. But today, the important infrastructure that powers the engine of the city is often invisible. The theorist Kazis Vernelis argues that One Wilshire is a major piece of global economic engine. It's part of a telecommunications economy that recently supplanted aerospace as one of the region's leading global industries and helped to support the rise of Hollywood's entertainment economy. The entire system converges in a single-use, vertical hub centered at One Wilshire, a bland high-rise distinguished only by the extra-large cooling units on its roof and the proliferation of orange markings on its surrounding paving. I've often thought about the movie The Matrix was in part a critical cautionary tale of this condition. No longer is important infrastructure marked with monumental constructions. Instead, they're buried underground and hidden from sight. The Matrix tells the tale of what happens if we are banished forever to this realm. 
The Wachowskis aren't the only ones using their creative medium to reconcile this extreme disconnection between our digital worlds and our physical ones. When we're sort of like inside of these kinds of impersonal office spaces, aren't, aren't we as good as machines at that point? You know, I, think. I also spoke with Jimenez Lai, who was commissioned by the Downtown Center Business Improvement District to communicate the complicated role of the building in time and space. As a part of that study, uh, we wrote a story about Wang Wilshire. And this story was represented in the form of not exactly a comic book, but something like a, a set of storyboards. Wang Wilshire is a building inside of the skyline of downtown Los Angeles, which is inside of this window, uh, which is inside of this room. This room is inside of a model, which is inside of a photo shoot. This photo shoot is inside of a file, which is inside of a computer, which is inside of an office space, which is inside of a file that is part of a network of files that is inside of a server, which is inside of a network of servers that is inside of one Wilshire. AUDC, Kazis for Analysis Practice, installed a model of One Wilshire on a desert bluff in the 2006 High Desert Test Sites show. Relocating One Wilshire to the Mojave Desert underscores the unstable reconfiguration of space that network culture produces. One Wilshire could be anywhere, in downtown LA, in the desert, in your bedroom, or in the Marianas Trench. Space is something entirely different to us today. In this sense, One Wilshire is an unlikely monument. It looks like the most generic office building in the world, maybe one that Neo in the Matrix would have worked at as Thomas Anderson, not as Neo. But the building obviously isn't just a monument. It's a working piece of infrastructure. It is the densest access to dark and lit fiber in all the southwestern United States. In order to maintain unbroken access and to support such a burdensome electrical load, the building has been renovated to offer high-grade stable utility power from the LA Department of Water and Power, it has five separate utility power risers, 11 on-site diesel power generators, and enough fuel storage for 24 hours of continuous operation. And of course, there's 24-7, 365 days a year manned security and card control access. On the fourth floor is an area called a meet-me room, and this is the largest one in the country. A meet-me room, or an MMR, also known as a network access point, is a physical space within a data center or carrier hotel where different telecommunication carriers, ISPs, content providers, and other network service providers come together to interconnect their networks and exchange traffic. It is a neutral location where carriers can exchange traffic with each other and with other network service providers without the need for costly and time-consuming direct connections. Mimi rooms are particularly important for content providers such as streaming video companies and social media platforms, which need to ensure that their content is delivered quickly and reliably to end users. Of course, the building didn't start this way in the 1960s, and it took a pretty interesting road to get here. It was designed in the mid-1960s as a speculative office building by the firm Skidmore Owings & Merrill. The building expresses its frame and offers the type of open office environment that was popular at the time. A regular column grid with a core and as few other impediments as possible. Furniture does the rest of the work, but this generic architectural space for activities led to some strange conditions over time as our work life took on a life of its own. I feel that the disadvantages are outweighed by the advantages, but I feel that you've got to be a certain type of person to work in a place like this, and it doesn't suit everybody. We go Bureau Landshaft, uh, where the scattering of desks, you know, supposedly creates territories and humans are doing this way. And then we get like stuff like action office, where we eventually develop into cubicles where there's like, let's say, personal spaces within the workspaces uh, where you kind of like, per like specify and personalize your own zone of work. You know, the sterility of these kinds of drop ceiling um, spaces, like every place, any placeness uh, of the office environment. It seems that One Wilshire has always had a crisis of location. Curiously, the building isn't actually located at the address One Wilshire Boulevard. It actually sits at 624 South Grand Avenue. One Wilshire was a marketing name developed afterward. Wilshire Boulevard is an important avenue connecting long, disparate parts of LA and houses government and corporate headquarters. The building was originally home to law offices, and today there's still a few left over. But by the 1990s, people were moving out. The building was showing its age, and downtown LA wasn't quite the corporate destination that it once was. The owners needed to find new tenants, and they tried to take advantage of its strategic potential. 
It's also located near the SBC Communication Pockbell Central Switching Station at 400 South Grand with its towering, now obsolete, microwave antenna. Long-distance carrier MCI thus mounted its own microwave station on the roof of One Wilshire, at the time one of the tallest buildings with good sight lines to downtown. And in 1992, One Wilshire underwent a major renovation to facilitate its new role, upgrading its power and cooling infrastructure. LA is a city of infrastructure and flows. They turned a river into a bleak concrete channel. Highways lace through and define life here. These constructions don't make for pretty places. At the same time, LA is the place of glitzy images, presentations, and stage sets. These two worlds, the infrastructure and the spectacular display, are usually kept separate here. But in some ways, they come together curiously at One Wilshire. Movies stream to you through this building, but the building itself is nothing much to look at. This is the nature of sites of logistics. Places like Amazon distribution centers are covering an increasingly large footprint on the earth, but they're not really spaces for people. They're the spaces for the flow of things and information, out of sight and out of mind, despite their crucial importance in our lives at large. Whereas there was a time when layers upon layers of paperwork was processed by layers upon layers of humans instead of office spaces. And that paperwork, uh, what it generates is data, right? By the turn of the 21st century, it did get replaced. We continue to use the office tower for what it is, uh, it's just that the, the constituent processing that data uh, is not human this time. One Wilshire represents a challenge for architecture. In one sense, it's the future of digital infrastructure. Yet it's almost a completely generic office building. The building itself and its kind of outward design almost doesn't seem to matter. It's more about what the building can do. During the 1800s, railroads were cut through our cities. During the 1950s, highways were the new urgent physical connections that needed to be cut right through our cities. Today, it's places like One Wilshire. It's not a building for people, but it's a building for cables. And the fact that it doesn't look like much means I can hide in plain sight. I can't believe how much I love this little razor, which was made in Henson Shavings Aerospace Machine Shop in Canada. This thing's incredible. It's made by craftspeople in a family-run business that makes parts for the ISS, Mars rover, and other satellites. They've taken that expertise and aimed it at crafting the perfect razor. Through their research, they found that the way that the razor blade is supported is crucial to the smoothness of its operation. The flexible blade, if it's left too exposed, can result in chatter, causing nicks, cuts, and irritation. So Henson machines are razors out of aluminum, with incredible tight tolerances befitting their aerospace heritage. This allows them to expose the minimum amount of actual blade, just 27 microns. The blade ends up being supported along its length, eliminating chatter and eliminating the problems that plague most razors. As soon as you touch it, it feels like something that could have been an integral part of the space station or something. It also has clever engineering features like the channels that help easily remove hair and cream. You can also use normal razor blades that cost just five cents and are recyclable, making the razor a great investment in high quality, earth-friendly personal item that makes you feel like an astronaut every time that you shave. So use the link below, pick out your favorite razor, then add a 100 pack of blades. Use my code Stuart Hicks, one word, to get those blades for free with your purchase. Start getting that high quality shave that you've been wanting today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What are your thoughts about data centers masquerading as anonymous office buildings? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Then check out some of these other videos which come out every other Thursday. See you over there.